let's uh, start from right the beginning. So uh, the idea behind the whole thing, where can we kind of trace that back to? I think uh, Mac and I were introduced uh, through a mutual contact, uh, Matt Bacon, might have been 2017 or so, and uh, just said that Mac was looking to collaborate and, you know, kind of told me a little bit about, you know, who he was and instantly know, you know, a thousand songs that Max played on. So I was just like, this guy wants to, you know, do this stuff. Like, All right. You know, so uh, I believe we just got in touch. And a few weeks later, he was out here in this room where I'm sitting in my half garage and we just ended up recording. And uh, he's appeared on a few of the prior Grid Failure releases. Uh, one of the collaborations I have with Megalophobe, uh, several records he's you know he's had a spot a song appearance or so on and uh the idea was there to do something uh more intense so uh when the pandemic hit it was just like you know what else are we going to do so we just kind of leaned into it and said let's let's make a record you know from your place and my place and you know just sort it out so I don't know, Mac. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. You pretty much covered quite a bit of it. And uh, at the point, uh, at the point where we first met, and everything, I just recorded some more stuff, and I was looking for a totally new direction to take the music in, much more experimental direction, and also uh, much more just basically interesting things, and uh, just do different things than what I was doing pr previously. Um, I'd always wanted to, uh, I've always been on sort of the, the total inside track, but also on the outer fringes of things as well, as far as the uh, musicians and as far as uh, the people I work with and projects that I've been involved in. So it was an automatic fit, although who would have known at the time, but it was an automatic fit that working with the project and uh, we did several really interesting things on the very first recording session that we had. So I knew things were going to click after that. I could tell. Talk about the um, experimental side of things. So there's a lot of lot of things here, of course, like the horror teams and so on. So uh, what is the story of uh, this memberment cabaret in the end? And where did it all come from? <clears throat> um, a lot of... Uh, grid failure in general is very uh, improvisational or not really uh, preconceived with a final product. I kind of uh, play a lot of different random instruments, uh, not very well, all with tons and tons of uh, effects. And, and there's just this kind of uh, experimental uh, just nature to the whole thing. Um, I just naturally make heavy music. So just it's a heavy experimental project, but there are seriously no boundaries to what grid failure can be. So when I'm working on a record that's 100% just myself uh, with no outside collaborators or uh, contributors, uh, a lot of times a certain theme will come up and, and uh, I'll follow a certain theme. And other times there's just no real set image so it's very hard to when you have that much of a of a boundary like a boundary free area uh it kind of becomes difficult to find a direction sometimes so uh it was more like how can we you know take advantage of max incredible style with this and instantly it, we just started making music without really having a direction as to where the record was going to be or what the theme was going to be we went through a thousand different art ideas and, and we really had no idea. We were just making and making and everything just kept taking a darker twist. I'd try to write something that was a little more direct and Mac would be like, nah, let's make something totally fucked up. And I'd be like, all right, let's, let's go crazier then. Like, you know, it was pretty natural to just keep going heavier and weirder. And Mac just kept coming back. Like he doesn't have a home recording set up, you know, ready to go pandemic hits. He starts playing daily in his in his stairwell, just playing inspirational stuff for his building. We're all in lockdown. There's people dying everywhere. 
and he's playing in a stairwell just to like help give some you know some levity to this building where there's a lot of artists that live and and I thought it sounded great just on his Instagram post. So I started, I was like, just go out in your hallway and just, and just, just beef it. Just go out there and just, and, and just play. And he filmed everything. So out of it came this creepy image of this guy playing in a stairwell and me playing in, in this place. And it just kind of became what it is. Uh, Matt can tell you about his uh, 70s, uh, like bad cop movie uh, kind of vibe that he took with it, which gave it that, that gritty edge. Right. There was a, it basically turned into at a certain point after I kept encouraging things to go further and further haywire and further and further madness and mayhem, uh, finally became an organized nucleus of basically a 12 tone row that I had written out. And of course, the uh, retrograde, the uh, inversion, and the original, and uh, the three part rather than four part, because I didn't want to get it too complex. But however, what it did, it gave a very identifiable sound. And uh, it's a sound that was used actually in a lot of uh, cop uh, TV shows, you know, uh, things that you would see all the time on TV in the 70s and uh, some really interesting things like that. So it automatically gives you a certain kind of sound, a certain vocabulary and identity. And from that, we had something very consistent to work with but totally whacked at the same time. So it was really a whacked consistency that we had as far as the basic tracks that were being laid. And um, after you were to listen to it maybe two or three times, you would, you would start to hear that. You would hear the identifiable sound. You would hear the characteristics of what the tonal combinations were. And it was just like, after a while, you say, okay, I'm really familiar with that. The first time out hearing this, I think most people are going to be left out there saying, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> what am I listening to? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, there's a few people who are going to listen to it that way. And uh, a lot of and then if you listen to it again, if you have the patience to do that and you can see what's in there and appreciate it and then and, and get into it, it's a familiarity. And it's as familiar as any hook on a pop song, really, after you hear it a few times. Why do you think pop songs are a hit? You hit on radio 50,000 times in a week. And uh, those are the ones that get to be a hit. I mean, of course, it's much more accessible than what we were putting together here uh, as far as what the uh, average ear will tolerate. But basically, it's repetition. And uh, the repetition has an effect. Yeah, you have mentioned the quarantine a couple of times now. And uh, the whole COVID situation, of course, uh, affected this recording a lot uh, is it even too soon to kind of say in how many ways did it affect this recording or how would you describe that relationship it absolutely affected this recording the uh, the mood uh the whole thing about the uh dismemberment cabaret i mean we felt like our souls were being dismembered by losing various uh friends I lost 50 friends to this thing. And uh, a lot of people who their health will never return to any kind of suitable thing. I just found out another friend of mine had a stroke two days ago from catching this thing. I mean, yeah, dismemberment cabaret, it dismembered and disfigured my world and Dave's world in just about every way imaginable, as well as everybody we know pretty much. So it was time, it was time for a title like that. It was time for a theme like that. And it was uh Time for everybody to get on board of that. Everybody says, oh, why don't you play some happy music, cheer people up? Ah, come on. There's plenty of shit out there like that already. We don't need any more of that. We need to get into the real thing of <laughs> what this thing induced us into, what kind of vibe it brought us to. And as artists, what how it reflected on us. Yeah, I don't know how to make happy music. It's just It just comes out of me naturally uh, just to be heavy and and abrasive it just it's just i don't know it's what i've always done it's not to say i don't want to branch out of that kind of thing and i haven't done anything uh you know not fully extreme but yeah with this it was kind of like uh when you look at it with uh all the bright tropical colors and the club theme and everything there's this uh kind of uh, old school like jazz show flyer attitude to it and it has this whimsical sort of uh you know, 
humor to it, I guess, maybe, or, or, or something lighter on the surface. But yeah, uh, it had that very serious tone to it because we, you know, we were scared out of our mind. We were working on this thing in like March and April when everything was locked down and you couldn't get food. You know what I mean? It was, it was literally like, you know, we had no idea what was going on. Half the country was ignoring it. And, and New York was, we were just getting just destroyed. And uh, so it was kind of beyond the usual tape trading sort of build. It was this, I don't know, it was like a really important focus for us to figure out how to get some kind of cohesive sound out of all this nut shit. So there is, yeah, like I said, that, that duality, there's like, if you just look at it from a passing consumer, you can just, you know, hear these, uh, you know, obviously violent and, and ridiculous, like insane lyrics, like the lyrics have nothing to do with the quarantine or right? the lyrics are just straight slasher stuff. They're just murderous, just totally insane, uh, you know, rampage sort of lyrics. Um, but Mac and I, in like, yeah, we were, you know, we were, every time we talk, it was just, yeah, more people were dying. And, you know, it was, it was, it was very intense in that way. Um, just, you know, everything was just like this on the phone or, you know, email or whatever it was. It was, you know, we, we, you know, we only got together for the first time uh, a couple weeks ago we went and shot another video for the record uh, and actually got to hang out uh, in person for the first time in, in you know, a year and a half. Uh, so yeah, it was cool to, to have that happen after this whole record process, you know, it was, uh, it was, it's, it was, it was really good first time getting out around people, you know, vaccinated and everything else and, and uh, you know, going out and actually feeling safe and watching the city kind of uh, coming back to life. It was, it was very cool actually after this year and three months or whatever. Yeah, that's true. The whole album is of course a visual experience and very cinematic too. So uh, what about the visuals? Uh, how was that kind of a artistic process? That was just, again, because we, you know, we, we only, we live less than an hour away from each other. Max is Staten Island and I'm in uh, Rockland County, which is just north of Manhattan. Um, and, uh, it, you know, we're not that far apart. So now that we're vaccinated and everything, we can get together and, and record a record. And the way we work, we have a concept or idea. We could probably get together and knock out some kind of new record quickly. We're already talking about how to do that next. So you know, the whole quarantine, the whole separation, the need to record remotely isn't there anymore. Uh, so it would be easier to have Mac just come out here again or even take some equipment out to his joint or, you know, whatever, go to a studio together or, uh, you know, there's any any sort of, you know, wide open ideas now that, you know, now that we're, you know, we're safe to, to you know, see humans again. <laughs> we have the shot. Um, so it's, the need's not there for that. But yeah, that was really the only way we could do it uh, to have any videos was to record separately. So the same thing, Mac was just sending me these clips. And instead of recording audio on his phone, he was recording high quality video. So I had like dozens and dozens of these short clips, 20 seconds, a minute and a half of Mac playing and walking up and down the stairwell and like kind of coming around the corner and playing as he came down for some and sitting there with sheet music for some and like all these different, and he was just actually sending videos. So we had tons of, and I was like, why? Like I was already ripping the audio from that to use for his country, you know, for, for the creation of the whole uh, album. But I was like, why just take the audio and throw these out? I was like, let's just, use all these clips too so i just you know i did the same thing you know just shooting on camcorder and phone and you know he was just out there shooting on the phone there and like had a couple other uh, shots just out around uh, where he's at staten island and everything and uh you know it was just my usual video process of, of condensing you know 16 times too much footage into a you know spastic you know, condensed, paranoid looking, you know, high neon thing, whatever we, you know, we, we try to stick to a few color schemes and some of it, but uh, yeah, the videos again are just trying to fit more of the, uh, uh, you know, the weird creation, you know, it's, they're just, you know, dark and wild and, and, you know, as, as, as much as we could do just, you know, two guys sending stuff together during this thing, you know, I've seen so many people doing these, uh, you know, videos of them playing and they look like this interview. There's people just in their kitchen or something like that. And I'm like, these aren't that interesting. It's it's nice to see people 
you know, doing something, but I don't want to watch four screens like I'm at a work meeting or something. If it's a music video, I was like, we got to make this look like this art and this, you know, this whack shit we're making. It has to be just off off the charts, you know? So it was like, we didn't want, you know, this serious uh, bummer overtone of sitting around the pandemic, like all mopey or anything. So we just went kind of nuts and just made it, you know, kind of fit the, the music, you know? Mac filmed, you know, a lot of stuff out there. He can tell you, you know, you know, he was filming outdoors, you know, running around playing by the bridge. That's right. Yeah. By the Verrazano Bridge, uh, did quite a few hits out there. And as a result of uh, doing that and looking for scenes and looking for places, uh, that's how we found that really crazy place we shot the last video that we just did. And uh, what a, what a find that was. It was like some, just a, just a wasteland of uh, treasures, really. Some really wild stuff out there. And so that was a different way of putting things together for me. And uh, it was a little bit different than what I'd done before. So just putting that together and finding that process of how it worked. And then, of course, I send the footage to Dave. Dave would just put it together. He had, he had a conceptual colorization, uh, animation, the, the whole thing had the whole package of what he wanted it to look like. And he has a, a trademark look anyway. And then so what, whatever I did, just he took it and did his thing with it, which was a sonic remix, really, of a, of a video, really. Mm -hmm. Made something interesting in some cases out of uh, something just bare and just the basic essential that would otherwise just be boring unless it was manipulated and uh, worked out. and. Uh, colorized and conceptualized there's literally only the, only the two of us uh recorded everything all the video um the, the only other hand that was involved in any real bit of this uh was probably uh uh dan at black matter mastering who mastered it in the end but we made you know all the video i made the all the artwork i laid out the you know the cassette and everything else uh greg at nefarious industries who released the the album uh you know, had a little, had some, you know, technical work with, you know, helping with layouts and the production end of things for the label. And uh, that was it. It was just the two of us. There aren't other outside, uh, uh, any outside musicians, artists, video, anything, um, until the newest video that Mac just mentioned for the video uh, for Pieces, which uh, we filmed with uh, Tyler Adams just out at this wasteland Mac was just talking about. So that's still to come out um, after probably several months of editing the hours of footage of this ridiculous wasteland we have. So <laughs> it yeah, should be, yeah. yeah, it's going to be a hell of a process to get that figured out, but that's, you know, that's on. So there is still another, at least one more video coming from this album, even though it was released on Friday. So.